Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 8, Applying Through VTAC. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to a podcast that we hope will help parents and students of MacKillop College navigate their way through the tertiary application process for 2021. In normal circumstances, the college would have presented this in a formal presentation at MacKillop College, but obviously because of the situation we have at the moment, we've been unable to do that. Parents and students of year 12 would have already received information and a link to a comprehensive briefing and PowerPoint that the Victorian Tertiary and Assessment Admission Centre has sent through. But what we thought we would do for parents and students of MacKillop is have a little bit of a more detailed overview and a little bit of a Q&A about the most important aspects of what is quite a lengthy PowerPoint presentation. To support us in doing that today, we've got our careers counsellor, Ms. Tracy Sama, as well as our year 12 coordinator, Mr. Sean Omani. Thanks for coming along, Tracy and Sean. And today, as, as I said, our hope is to just go through and clarify some of the major aspects of what is quite a lengthy presentation from v VTAC, and maybe some ask some questions on behalf of the students and parents that they may not be able to ask because of the fact that we're doing this remotely. Tracy, what would be the first thing that you'd like to highlight from the Victorian Tertiary Admission Centre briefing that's been forwarded to our parents and students? I think the first thing that I want to focus on is the key dates of the VTAC application process. So as, as they know, the 3rd of August was when applications, VTAC applications opened. Now, following that is the 30th of September. Now, that's when timely applications close. So what that means is if they can get their application within that time frame, then they're not charged extra fees. So the minimum fee that they would just need to pay for their application is $41. But anything after the 30th of September, it will increase. Now, so Tracy, that, that, um, those dates are fairly, they're set, aren't they? So there's no they flexibility around yep. them. There's and no that, flexibility. And that fee is paid through the application process itself. That's right, through their account that they've created by VTAC. Would you say the same information each year that we give out, Miss uh, Tracy, that all of these change, all changes can be made. It's about actually enrolling in the process that's most critical, that you can actually change your preferences later on? Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, as long as they pay their fee by early December, yep. that's okay, but they need to lodge their application by the 30th of September. And that's purely just a setting up the, the actual process to apply. That, it's not actually finalising what they want to do next year. No, no, they need to, firstly, the initial step is to create an account. So that's a registration process. Yep. Then once they've created their account, they're then able to lodge their application to their courses. And it's important that they do it within, between the 3rd of August and the 30th of September. So the first key point that comes out of the presentation is the importance of keeping the dates and making sure you apply and, and meet those dates. Ensure that you're setting up your account so that you can meet those dates to ensure that you're able to pay the fee, which is $41 and not occur any additional or additional expenses as part of the process. So other than the dates, Tracy, what's the next thing amongst the presentation that you think is most important for the students and parents to be aware of? Just so they know that once they apply for courses it's not locked in they've got the opportunity to change their preferences around right up until they receive their ATAR 
so their rater is released on the 30th of December, which is later than usual due to the pandemic. Then they've got a few days once they receive their rater to actually change their preferences again. And they will have a clearer idea of their rater then and their ranking. So that will give them an opportunity. So Ms. Sama, the input of possible courses for 2021 that they do by that 3rd of August date just needs to be an initial indication of the courses that they're thinking they would like to do at that time. It, do, it doesn't need to be considered to be a definitive list or something that can't be changed based on the coming circumstances, which is knowledge of results, knowledge of opportunities, scores that you might need to get into a particular course. It's just an initial indication of, of the subjects, that, of the courses that you're looking to do. Is, yeah. that, is that how we'd summarise that? Absolutely. So there's a lot of flexibility in there. Yeah. And the key is to put, place your preferences from one preference one to eight, because what will happen is they'll, they'll start up the top and they work their way down during selection time. So, and there's always room, there's always flexibility to change your preferences around. So Tracy, you'd probably advise the students to, within the areas of interest and the things that they're considering, to cast a broad net across a wide range of courses, across a wide range of institutions that really meet what they're looking to do next year. And then that's going to be able to be changed on a regular basis based on what happens going forward. Yes. Um, and just be realistic about those goals and, and are they achievable? Yeah. So meeting the dates, being flexible around the courses that you choose and, 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 not un and understanding that the list doesn't need to be a definitive or definite list. What are the other things that you think from the briefing are important for, for our students and parents to be aware of? Even between each um, offers, like there's an offer, the, the initial offers are in, in full at, oh, sorry, on the 4th of January. So they can change their preferences after those offers, the first round offers go out as well. So there's that flexibility as well. So after each round offer, there will be an opportunity to change preferences around as now, well. Obvious, obviously, Tracy, the dates have been changed and that has been extended out. And you've talked about the 30th of December and then early in January, the 4th of January for the first round offers. In normal circumstances and in these circumstances, where as we as a college are going to be able to support students through the process of making those changes based on the scores that they get through their through the ATAR and then what courses they may wish to apply for based on their final ATAR results? I'm hoping yes. Um, so as soon as their um, results do come out um, and their ATARs are released, that I'm able to be, you know, have access to or students have access to further counselling. Yes. So I think one of the things, and I think Mr. Amani, you'd agree, is that even though there are timelines and dates to this process, that it's actually quite a fluid process in terms of students being able to make changes based on changes in circumstances. It's important that parents and students understand that the process is a defined process in terms of making the application and setting up the account. But from then that point, it's a very fluid process in being able to look at what you might want to change, what interests might change, what courses you may want to do, what opportunities you may wish to actually take up in the 2021 school year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the big part that we've seen over the years is that students come across extra information as they're going along. They might be enlightened to a course that they didn't come across in their first investigations, their first amount of research that they get towards the end of the year and that there may be scholarships or other opportunities that they hadn't considered before and that those preferences can then change in order or be entirely new preferences prior to uh, the final dates. And then of course, once the results come out and the initial offers are made, once again, things may change, opportunities may change. And they, but I think the, I think the big takeaway, Mr. Exton, I think you'd agree, Ms. Sama, that the students aren't locked in. They're not locked in and they, the, the biggest amount of work that they need to be doing around this is investigation and research at the moment, a lot, in time with and alongside making the application. 
Yes, absolutely. And I think what they need to make sure is even if they need to apply between the 3rd of August and 30th of, of September, yep. that's crucial. Because yep. if they don't lodge their application after the, uh, they lodge it after the 30th of September, that's when then the they're going to be, come in and that's right. So the 3rd of August to the 30th of September for applications. Once you've set up your account, you can put in your preferences. Ms. Summer, I have a question. I'm a student that's not sure whether I want to study next year. I'm a student that isn't 100% sure if, if university or, or a, a, a TAFE or a tertiary place is something that I want to do. I might even want to take a gap year. It gets, I get a sense that from you, what you're saying is, the best thing to do is open an account between the 3rd of August and the 30th of September to give yourself options around what you might want to do next year. Is that fair to say? Yes. And, and not only, look, when you register with VTAC, that's not an application. And that's something that I need to make clear. Students seem to think once they register, they've lodged their course application. No, they haven't. They've only created an account. So even if they're unsure, lodge an application, um, apply for a particular course, even if they just put one course in there, and then we can explore it further because that secures. And as you know, Mr. Omani, Mr. Exton, given the pandemic, the workforce isn't looking great. That's a big... So it's important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think too, there's also restrictions. Mr. Exton mentioned a gap year traineeships, apprenticeships, the workforce, but also travel where students might have considered doing, say, a, a placement overseas working mm. for Camp America or Absolutely. Uh, all these other opportunities working for NGOs overseas and doing a placement somewhere. That, that's going to be extremely restrictive as well as far as what the opportunities are just for next year going forward at this stage. It's about having your pathway, and I've said this many a time before, your pathway needs to be as open and broad as possible. Absolutely. And by simply creating the account, applying to an institution, putting some preferences in, you've opened and left open, that pathway can take many directions. By not doing it, we're closing the pathway down. We're making it come form into a single or only a double track, a double path. We wanna have it you know, seven, eight, 10 options open there. Yep, I totally agree. So, I've opened up my account. I've submitted my preferences by the 30th. I've been flexible around my thinking, bearing in mind I'm not sure, but doing this allows me to have flexibility. It allows me to adjust what I'm looking to do based on the current circumstances. And Ms. Samo, as much as the workforce is not looking fantastic, you could probably say that the opportunities around tertiary placement is going to look a little bit better next year because of increased opportunity. So I've done all that and I've, I've got an idea. I've put in, my, I've put in my, my original choices. I've made some changes between, between the time that I've opened up my account and made my submission of choices. I've gone in, I've changed it. I've then been flexible as I've gone forward. I've got my results and then looked at different options and different choices. In normal circumstances, our students would be able to go to the Topina building and see you in your office or make an appointment for you to be able to, to see them in, in the office. Obviously at this time, students aren't able to do that. You're available, aren't you, throughout this process via email and are more than happy to um, communicate with parents and students either um, on the phone through the college phone system or via email. Just types of things that you might be that you might be able to help with or types of things that a phone call or an email might be able to support the students with even with their application so i've had students already contact me just helping them with the application process and and understanding the codes the, of the courses that vtac are offering on their website but also the other area that I want to focus on is C's and scholarships and how supportive universities and TAFEs are being and have been during this pandemic. So can we, so actually, once they've actually lodged 
their application, their course application, then, then they are able to apply for C's. Now C's is basically special consideration and scholarships, VTAC offer two general scholarships, but also universities offer scholarships as well, which they can source via their, the Institute's website directly. So it's important that they take advantage of that, especially um, this year during this pandemic. Ms. Sama, on C's applications, we, we go through this process every year and I think it would probably be fair to say that a lot of our students are not that well versed and not that understanding of the opportunities that exist through this program in terms of supporting their applications into different tertiary institutions. It's something that some students are well and truly um, understanding of, but many of our students don't necessarily take full advantage of some of these opportunities. Would that be correct? That's correct. And it's, it's basically there to, mainly for those that want to go to university, because it can adjust their rater. And it's important that if, certain, if they've experienced specific circumstances that um, can be granted, well, it's important to apply. So just with the Cs, there are, um, which is special consideration, there are four categories. So the first category, okay, so the first category um, covers personal information and location and also gender. So what that means is if they are female and they're interested in applying for engineering, because that's a very masculine orientated field, when a female um, applies for it, because they want more females in the, in the industry, that in itself can adjust their rate up. It will be taken into consideration. Um, also Indigenous, it covers Indigenous. It also covers that, you know, we're underrepresented as a school, given that we're in the West. Um, and also that where we actually live. So we live in the West and that will be taken into consideration as well. And it's Just a simple- an example of that would be, uh, Ms. Sama say, for example, Latrobe offer, and I'm, I'm just throwing up names here, but Latrobe yep. offer a certain course or there's certain courses that Latrobe offer, but students from McKillop or in the Wyndham area, there's not a, a, a large percentage. They're not represented in great numbers in that particular institution, they may turn around and say, well, we want to have more students from, represented from across a broad area of Melbourne. Therefore, in the C's application as an underrepresented school or area, that goes to the advantage of our students in applying for those courses. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And like RMIT with their SNAP program. But if they don't tick that box, then VTAC are unable to release their information. Yep. So it's that's the, so that's important. The biggest, that's the biggest point when we come to C's applications, this special entry admission scheme that tick the box, ultimately tick the box because yep. it's not going to hurt. There's no disadvantage in ticking a box. You're not looked at any differently. Only that you're considered for these, these categories when it comes to applying for a course that you may want to go into. Yes, that's, that's right. And it's just ticking that box. There's no additional application forms for that category. It's that easy. So, so I really Sama, encourage all applicants to apply for category one. So Ms. Sama, we have category one, which is personal information and location. And you've talked yep. about that. And there are three other categories that are different, but might require a little bit of additional information for those individual students. That's correct. So category two is for disadvantaged financial background. So for that, you require, so just say parents receive an allowance or even a students receive an allowance, then that's an indication that they've been financially disadvantaged. So for that, it does require evidence. It's financial documentation. So generally that's the Centrelink um, statement that parents receive um, that highlights the sort of allowance they're on um, and the financial assistance they're receiving. And then there are or, two additional categories? Or just on the financial one though, I, I'd need to make this clear. 
if they don't receive an allowance and they are struggling financially, they would need to, and if they don't have a statement from Centrelink to indicate that, they need to write an impact statement. Students need to write an impact statement indicating how they've impacted financially during their studies. And to support that, they need to get a statement of support. Now that could be a teacher that is, is so aware of their story, or it even could be our business manager at the school, because they would be aware of the financial disadvantage they've been in. And there's two other categories? Yep, the other two. Disability and medical condition? Yeah, so if they've got some sort of impairment, whether it's hearing, whether it's sight, whatever it may be, or any medical condition that has impacted on their studies, definitely I support, I encourage that student to apply for that category as well. Would it also be helpful at this time if they started gathering that documentation? So if they do have a, a medical practitioner or a medical psychiatrist, psychologist, that they can provide some type of evidentiary um, documentation, that they can be gathering that at the moment, because we do often find coming towards the end of the year or coming towards the application times, that there's a bit of a rush on to get this documentation gathered together and submitted via the VTAC process. So if they yes. do start that now, and gather as much as possible, we'll, yeah, be able absolutely. To, we'll be able to assist and sort as to what's required along the yes. way as well. Yes, and that's important. Now, so for instance, if it's a medical condition and a, and a doctor, have you been seeing a specialist? Sometimes it's hard to get in to see a specialist. Um, there's a waiting, you know, long waiting period. So you can go and see your doctor that's aware of your medical condition because it's easier to go and see your GP than a, than a specialist. If it is a well-being, like a psychological um, or mental, mental health, health illness, yep. again, it's really hard to see. If you're seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist, again, it's hard to see them in time. So they allowed counsellors. So even our school counsellors can write statement of support for the students as well, as long as they're aware of their circumstances, their story. Yep. Um, that's important. The categories. Think, sorry. Sorry, they keep going. Sorry. So, just say, for instance, oh, okay. So, if they want a counsellor or a school counsellor to support their impact statement, it's so important that the student shows that responsible person their impact statement. And finally, Miss Sama, the difficult circumstances, and I think you'll talk about this, but importantly, there's the inclusion of the impact of COVID-19 on a family in this year's application process? Yes, so automatically they're taking COVID into consideration. That's an automatic. But for instance, there might have been a situation during that, during lockdown, where there might have been domestic violence um, or internet issues. Direct impact from the illness? Direct, yes. So in that case, they will, there's addition, there's, there is an additional form that they've created for category four. Basically they'll, it will indicate, the student needs to indicate on that form whether it is additional COVID circumstance. If that's the case, they don't need to write an impact statement. It's basically answering a few questions and then what will happen is I, as a careers counsellor, will receive a document that I would need to complete and then send that off to VTAC. And, and all of these come through within the C's application, don't they, Ms. Sama? Like yes. all these elements will be prompted within the C's application where they tick the box and say, okay, what extra stuff do I need to put in there? That's right. Ms. Sama, with the difficult circumstances that include disruption to living situation, illness of a friend or a family member, a death, a natural disaster, being from a refugee or asylum seeker background. Is there additional information or support needed to um, apply for this section? Well, that, that all falls under category four difficult circumstances. But if I can just focus on specific areas where it's caused a lot of trauma, they, VTAC don't expect them to write an impact statement because they don't want them to revisit 
um, that trauma. Yep. Therefore, it does not require um, an impact statement. Okay. So we'll look to put this together now and have it complement the VTAC briefing. And let's just recap a little bit about the things that we think are most important and really impact on our families and our parents and our, and our students during this process. First of all, the importance of setting up an account between the 3rd of August and the 30th of September, paying the $41 that allows you to initiate an account, and then by that 30th of September date, having your preferences placed in your, in your application. Now those preferences are fluid. They don't need, they can change, they don't need to be defined, and they're not permanent. Those changes can occur right up till the period of time of first round offers this year on the 3rd of January. It's important that if there are circumstances, whether they be unique individual circumstances, whether it be disability, whether it be well-being, whether it be medical, that you look for a C's application. C's applications will also take into account financial circumstances and personal difficulties and hardships that this year include COVID-19. It's important that you consider a C's application because the opportunities that are extended to you through a C's application in terms of being underrepresented from a geographical area with particular courses or particular institutions. This information is really, really important for parents and students to review. We hope this little podcast has helped you with some of the specifics of the, of the VTAC briefing. But importantly, what we're asking students to do, and we always ask students to do, is reach out through this process. If you have any questions, please make sure you get in contact with Ms. Tracy Sama, our careers counsellor and advisor at the college, Mr. Omani, Ms. Morton as your year 12 coordinators. And in some circumstances, you'll need to approach individual teachers to be able to provide you with some support. You're not tied in, you're not locked in. The dates are important to meet them, but within those dates, the importance of doing research and constantly reviewing your choices and looking at your selections with respect to your interests, but also with respect to the world circumstances that exist now in terms of opportunities job with, with jobs, opportunities with travel and those things. So I'd like to thank Ms. Sama and Mr. Omani for coming on and providing this overview today. And again, the importance of getting some extra support or asking questions through the college is really an important way to go. We hope this has helped you through this process and we continue to hope that the information that we're providing remotely supports you to try and make this unusual year a little bit more usual. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Exton. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.